what good and bad is for their own self. And that's why I think um, like major religions sometimes, um, like, as I said, I was, I used to be Muslim. My family was uh, there. They are Muslim and I was born into this religion, but it really defines what good and bad is for a lot of people. But like some people, you know, some people can't, some people have different beliefs based on their own life experiences. You can't know what what a person's whole life is like. So you can't define, you can't tell them this is good and this is bad because their life is different than your life. And they're, um, for, for them, like if they do a certain thing that is perceived to be bad by other people, you don't know what it's like for them like maybe from their own perspective it was a good thing and they have their own um, mo motive for doing that thing that is considered bad so in in general I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is that good and bad is very individualized just as spirituality is unique to the individual so if that's true right about good and bad then um it would be okay then for a mass murderer to run around and killing people because that's his good. Um, uh, yeah, that's a really, <laughs> that's something to think about because you know there's there have been you know famous people like Ted Bundy who killed so many young women and um, you, the thing is we can never really know what was going on inside of his mind other than from his account like from the trials and from what other people see but. Nobody knows what's how a person, like what it's like to be a person except that person themselves. And so like maybe in his mind, it, there was a reason, like he, he thought what he was doing was good. So in, it, there's really no way to have, um, to define good and bad, like, well, other than from, from the outside, we can, we have crimes, we have things that are illegal and there's obvious reasons because it hurts other people, but- Right, but the person who's doing it, it's a good for him. Yeah. So, so the good and bad is a societal thing. Mm -hmm. It's in other words, you have to come into a society yeah. consciously when you come in, you know, as a, as a baby, this is the rules of the game. This is what we do over here. Mm -hmm. So you conform to those. Now, if you go outside those, then you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. What about this possibility? Suppose, let's say hypothetically, whenever Adolf Hitler was born, suppose someone said, well, look, this guy is born and he's going to do bad things. I must send someone down here to get rid of him so he won't do bad things. You know, is that, is that a possibility about how that works in terms of, in other words, like if it's all one consciousness, you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It doesn't really matter. Only matters on on, 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 the, on the human level, mm -hmm. right? But but you know, cosmically, we can take a guy out because it's going to interfere with the, the program. Let's say. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't know if um, like people when Adolf Hitler was born, nobody knew what he was going to turn into. And what I'm actually yeah. like what I'm saying is, the higher the higher levels, the the, the supreme yeah. consciousness says that. You know, we're going to send someone down to get rid of him mm -hmm. through another human being to take because he's going to do these bad things mm -hmm. in the human sense, not not in the cosmic sense, because mm -hmm. they have no right and wrong in the cosmic world. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's all just uh, our, um, the the universal consciousness. I guess is doing that to itself. It's just yes, <laughs> right. You know, have an experience. Have an experience, right? Yeah, so like um, it's experiencing what it's like to be uh, Adolf Hitler as well as the person, people fighting against him as well as his supporters. Like it's, it's just experiencing all those different perspectives. And that's the thing I think that really, um, that, that I guess I believe in is um, the truth can be seen from many different perspectives and we don't know what the entire truth or what what everything is be, because we don't see the world from every person's perspective at the same time if you know what i mean like sure. right now i can only see the world the only world that exists for me 
is the life I'm living and the things I know about and the the places I go the world through my eyes basically mm -hmm. I don't know what your life is like but until I'm in your body and I'm in your and I live your life basically so um yeah every person I guess Adolf Hitler had a life too and he he experienced he had certain experiences that caused him to do what he did and justify it and he he, maybe he felt that what he was doing was good for his for the way that he lived his life and the way that that caused him to think. Yeah, probably so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here's something for you to consider. You said that you don't know my world, right? There's a saying that says, um, "I meet no one but myself." Mm -hmm. how, how does how does how do you relate to that? Yeah, it's very. Um, that's very true you don't know what anyone else's like life is like you only know the, the person you know the most intimately is yourself from the day you're born until the day you die and then um my i mean nobody can really know for sure what happens after you die but my theory is that after you die you you remember every thing that ever happened like the the conscious you become one with the universal consciousness mm -hmm. and you remember everything you remember what every person who has ever existed or will ever exist and is currently existing is feeling um and it has experienced and it's it's crazy but i mean that's what i've gotten from most of the near death near death experience accounts that i've uh, learned about so why is that important for you to, to have that synchronicity with, with everything? Um, for me, it, it really um, inspires me to treat other people uh, the way that I would like to be treated and to have more compassion toward other people because I, I see myself in ev everywhere. I, like, and uh, with every person I like meet and I interact with, I see myself in them. Like I, I put myself in their shoes because I feel like the things I'm doing to them, I'm also doing it to myself. Since there's only one consciousness, I, I'm maybe one day my consciousness is going to experience life through their eyes. So that really inspires me to be kinder to people and to help people and um, be a better person in general. So in other words, you're, you're seeing it forward, you're paying it forward. Right. Mm -hmm thinking light years ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's great insight. Great insight. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, um, we we have a half hour in, is that okay with you? Can we go forward? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, so again, um, how does this universality, how does it relate to, to self-consciousness? Um, universality and self-consciousness, uh, Oh, let me, um, let me put it this way. Can you rephrase? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant to say, how does universal consciousness relate to self mastery? Um, well, when you realize that you like this is it, you are it. I, I, I have a hard time explaining this concept. It's very deep, but you, you, when you realize that, like the world you're experiencing right now, this is God, this is it, this is universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. You realize that you have so much power and you're creating the world, uh, you're contributing something to the world that you are going to experience yourself through other people's eyes eventually. So it makes, me, makes you feel more powerful because you realize you're, that you're a creator. You're just like God, you're made in the image of God, you are a creator. And when, when I came to that realization, I just felt so invincible, like so powerful, like nothing can hurt me. Even if something hurts me in the physical world, I'm, I'm indestructible basically. Like I, I can, like nothing affects me like 